Brian Dulesky with Able Distributors. Today, we are talking about the A2L refrigerant change that's coming January 1st, 2026. Actually, it'll get here before that, but after January 1st, 2026, you're gonna be installing the new equipment with the AE2L refrigerants. So let's dive into it, why the change? So when we were doing R22, we were worried about the ozone layer. Now, since then, the ozone layer has kind of repaired itself, it healed. So now we're moving from ozone depletion to global warming potential. You're gonna hear that number a lot, GWP. And what the EPA said was, if we lower the global warming potential to below 700, we should be able to start healing that as well. So for an example, 410 had a GWP number of 2,088. Now, all the new refrigerants are gonna have a GWP number less than 700. And the one that Able Distributors is going with on all the equipment we have is actually at 466. So it's way below 700. R32 is at 675, so it's below 700, but just barely. So let's jump, just jump into it. Two refrigerants are front runners, 454B and R32. Who went with what? 454B is gonna be our Bosch, our Napoleon, our Gibson, Train, Carrier, York, Ream, Lennox, Frigidaire. I missed a few, but you get the idea. R32 is gonna be more of the Daikin family. Goodman, Daikin, Mitsubishi, Panasonic, and LG. And I might have left one or two out of there too, but again, you get the idea. So the differences between the 454B and the R32, very similar. The 454B actually has some R32 in it, but it gets a much lower GWP number. So that's a good thing. So if the EPA comes back out again in five years and says, hey, now we want it below 600 or below 500, we're still in a good spot. The A2L, what does it stand for? The A of the A2L refrigerant stands for the classification whether it's toxic or not. So A means it's a non-toxic gas. Good thing. The two means it's flammable, but it's on a lower level of flammable. So it's considered somewhat flammable or slightly flammable. A toaster oven, a toaster, a microwave, an electric heater, none of these things are gonna ignite this gas. And honestly, the gas would have to be in such a concentration, just the right concentration to even get there. So I don't think we're gonna to have to worry about that very, uh, very much. It's the safest refrigerant next to 410. So 410 is a safer refrigerant as far as flammability goes, but terrible for the global warming. So we went a little bit better on the global warming and we kept it as safe as humanly possible. So I think it's, it's a good thing. Um, this type of refrigerant has been used in other countries for a while in other applications. So obviously it's new for us in the United States with uh, residential uh, packages, but it's, it's been out for a while. I think it's a good thing. So as we move forward, 410 and 454B, same pressures, almost the same BTU. The 454 did take a little bit of a hit, about 6% on the BTU but talking with some of the manufacturers, they've corrected with that with A-coil, TXVs, and compressor uh, con reconfiguration. So we're good there. We know that the 454B and the R32 are gonna be sold in big jugs. We know that they're gonna have left-handed thread, so you're gonna need a little thread adapter to allow you to connect your existing gauge hoses to that jug of refrigerant. And I'm assuming they did that to stop you from accidentally putting the wrong refrigerant in the wrong system. And trust me, it happens. I've talked to a lot of contractors that have done it with 410 and 22. So to me, I would not leave this little adapter on your jug of 454B. I would keep it on your yellow hose on your gauge set that you set aside for 454B or R32. Um, so that way you don't have to intermix the refrigerants. And if you ever try to take your R22 gauge set and spin them on to that jug, 
the adapter won't be there and you won't be able to do it and it'll catch a young kid saying, oh, I just grabbed the wrong jug out of the van. So it's going to be a real thing because we're going to have guys who are going to have to still carry an R22 or a drop-in replacement for R22. You're still going to need 410. If you work on, again, Napoleon, Gibson, Bosch, Train, Carrier, York, Ream, you're going to have to have 454B. And if you ever work on anything new for Daikin, Goodman, Amana, you're going to have to have 32. So we're going to have a van full of refrigerant. Um, so it's a, it's a real thing. What, how else does it impact us? I think, honestly, and again, this is going to be the first of a series of videos on this. Once we get what the sensors look like in the little board that ties those sensors, interfaces it with the furnace, because we know that there's going to be a sensor on the A-coil that if it detects a leak inside that plenum, it's going to turn on the fan, shut off the condenser unit until that dissipates. So we know that's coming. As soon as I get some of these in my hand, we'll do a wiring diagram. We'll do another video on that. I'm probably also going to do a, another video on best practices. Now, the, the name itself, best practices, means we should have been doing it all along, but we know we weren't. We know that in the past, you rush through a job, you get on to the next job, and if there's a leak, you come back later and fix it. It's a little bit more of a pain in the neck now. So we're going to want to make sure we're doing everything correctly as humanly possible to eliminate that leak in the first place. So if you don't have a swedging tool or an expanding tool, you're going to want to get one because instead of using a coupler, if you can swedge one end, slide it in and have one joint instead of two, you're better off. If you can go from that A coil all the way up and out and have no joints, you're way better off. Some manufacturers are even suggesting that, again, make sure your liquid line is clean, but put your liquid line filter dryer outside. So again, if we can have as many possibilities for a leak outside and fewer in the home, it's always better. So tools wise, you know, and maybe we should have always been carrying a, a fire extinguisher on the job and having it near you while you're brazing anyways. But now it's going to be a little bit more important, especially if you're going back and you're fixing a leak. You're going to want to reclaim that refrigerant. And yes, you're going to need a reclaimer that's certified for A2L refrigerant. Vacuum pumps, I look at differently. We're never going to hook a vacuum pump up to a system that's full of refrigerant anyways. So to me, a vacuum pump that you've got already will do just fine. If you want to upgrade, great. We'll have those. But when it comes to a reclaiming machine, you're going to have to go with A2L rated. You're going to have to take a jug, make it specifically for that. Nobody's come out with a jug or a reclaimed jug that's specifically for the flammable refrigerants. I would market flammable. I would, I would make sure that you don't mix in that jug so that you can evacuate a system safely, make your repair if you have a leak and then charge it back up and, and pull it back just like you would on a new install. So those are the few things that are going to change in our world. The scales, are going to, you're going to weigh it in the same. It's going to carry basically the same amount of refrigerant, maybe a little less. Um, other than that, that's the A2L refrigerant change in a nutshell. Please subscribe. Stay tuned. I'm going to have probably four or five videos on this change as we get closer and closer and closer. We know the cutoff is January 1st, 2026. We know that we're going to start stocking the new equipment, obviously, before that. We know that we're going to have replacement parts and all that stuff for 410 systems, so you don't have to worry about that. And yes, will the units cost more money? I'm thinking they have to because you've, now you've got sensors in the plenum to detect refrigerant leaks, and you have an interface board that'll shut off the condenser unit and turn the furnace fan on. So yeah, there's gonna be a little bit more labor involved, a little bit more parts and pieces involved when we go into 2026. Is it anything to panic about? No, honestly, the new gauges, if you go simple like this, take your old one, mark 1410, 122, get a new set, it'll have 410, R32, and R454B on it, and set this aside for the new A2L uh, refrigerants. And again, keep
keep this little adapter on your hose set, not on the tank. It'll help prevent mixture, and trust me, it's going to happen. Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors, stay tuned, more to come. <laughs>